Cool. Hey guys. Um, all right. For those who saw that I was talking about logging and you came to hear about lumberjacking. Sorry, it's application logging. Um, hey, gotta get to that joke in at some stage. Um, all right. So, uh, hi, my name is Matt. Um, I'm a senior software engineer here at NITO. I'm currently training to be an AWS certified solutions architect. So you're going to see a lot of AWS examples in here, um, just because it's at the very front of my brain at the moment. Um, where you see AWS, AWS solutions, you're also going to, you, you know that there's other solutions out there, so it's not specific to that. All right, let's get straight into it. Um, oh yeah, sorry, I'm late. I was meant to actually do this three months ago, but it coincided with this little diva being born. Um, so, I'm not there. Thank you. Oh, I didn't give birth, that was the one. <laughs> oh, um, all right, easy mode, when it comes to logging. Um, so, we all start with a web application. Um, the cubes on the left are, uh, yeah, left. Um, it's probably a LAMP stack, um, could be a cPanel server. All the logs are maintained locally, they're all in the local system. You've got your HTTP access logs, um, your PHP error logs, all going to the one place. Um, and they're all on one instance of a web server. The main part about this slide that I want to mention is according to the 12 factor app, um, Bible, I guess. The log streams aren't the log files. Uh, sorry, the logs aren't the log files. They're the actual stream of logs itself, the data. So that's what I'm going to be referencing is the actual data if you hear me talking about logs. Now, um, different mode. This is, there's some text missing. Of course there is. So let's say you've got several of these instances, um, all different web servers. They could be all different sections of your application. Uh, it could be API, um, web front end, et cetera, or they could just be um, duplication of the same instance. You've got log files on each one of these. Again, all on the local system. What you want to do, you don't want to have to SSH into each of these instances um, to find out where something might have gone wrong or get some statistics from the log files. You want one centralized location um, where you can go to to find everything you need. Um, so that's what that is. So what's going on here, this is actually expert mode, not easy mode. Um, each application instance logs to its own file system, again, as it was before. The logs are then tailed by um, an agent. Uh, I've got Kinesis here, Flume, Logstream, there's many more. They'll actually tail the log files themselves, and they will ship them off to a centralized location. <clears throat> um, that makes them readily available, but there are some problems with this. Uh, firstly, you've got well, you can't see where the log files, are, uh, where the log lines have been generated from. So you've got all this data, and you don't know where they've come from. Also, you've got a lot of different, in, uh, a lot of data, um, all put together from different instances. Um, there could be a hundred or five hundred instances if your application is that big, and you've got to sift through each log line uh, to find what you need. Um, and there's still chunky log files on these local systems, taking up disk space, and they're only getting bigger. So we need some solutions. Let's fix those problems. Firstly, uh, how do you log from a PHP application? I'm not just talking about error logs either. Um, a lot of people, when they think about logging, it's just what went wrong? Um, where are the errors? It's not just that. You can use the uh, logs for statistics. Um, you can find out how many users were on a particular page at one, at one point, why that page crashed, um, why the whole application crashed at one point. Logging from a PHP application is easy. Like if you've, I'm talking to a lot of PHP people. Um, you've all used um, PHP frameworks. Most of them use monolog. Um, like, yeah, you guys are PHP, whatever. Um, we've got some front end people in here, so ignore them. Um, <laughs> um, so they've all got a log handler, uh, such as monolog. I couldn't find any decent, decent other ones to name, so monolog zip. Um, you can do it yourself. PHP has these built-in functions. Um, Open log and syslog will allow you to print the syslog themselves itself. Uh, don't do that. Use monolog. <laughs> um, don't try and reinvent the wheel. It's just easier to do this. <clears throat> so monolog. Um, this is basically a log line generated from monolog. Um, you've got the date time, which it's set um, by the instance, so by the local date time. Um, you've got the channel, which in this case, this, this by the way, um, have you got a pointer on it? Yeah. Oh, so how does that work? That's magical. 
<laughs> what I've done here, I've got the, the log line um, as described by the constant in the line formatter class. And then I've broken down an actual log line. Um, so you've got the date time, you've got the channel, which is PHP. You've got the level name, uh, which is the warn, error, notice, etc. Then you've got the message, um, in this case, fail to open file. And then you've got the context, uh, which in this case is an exception thrown by Symfony. And then you've got the extras. Now, the reason why I'm talking about logging today is because I was handed the task. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, I was given the opportunity. Um, <laughs> passionately accepted, I did, um, to improve how Neato logs stuff, all stuff, um, application stuff. We've got a lot of things, uh, we, we've got a lot going on on this, this massive system of ours. We want to know what's going on at all times. We need a 360 degree view of the whole system. And logs are a great way to do that. We've, we're a team driven environment. So we've got lots of teams who um, own their own section of the platform. And they've, each, of the, if, each of those sections have their own entry points into the application itself. So what I've, the first thing I did was I allowed people to be able to tag that entry point <clears throat> and any logs that are generated from that point onwards, they're printed out at the end in the extra section of the log file. So we're already starting to get that separation of, of logs. Um, I can now find what I need from the sales channel team, for example, just by searching sales channel in the log files. Right, make, start, slowly start to make things a bit easier. Syslog. Um, it's a beautiful beast. Uh, it does a lot in the back end. It controls the logs for the whole file system, uh, the whole, yeah, the whole file system, the whole um, Linux system. If you're a Windows developer, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to include anything to do with that. Um, there's still beer over there if you just want to go. Um, <laughs> all right, so using syslog, we don't, we don't want to just print to the local, to your web route. You don't want just to find log files in your web route. You're gonna, you're gonna, it gets messy. So another way to separate out here, firstly, you've got severity of logs. So we've all seen debug logs, critical logs, errors. You don't, the best way to separate this is look at the environment that you're using. You, you, the production environment is already a messy place. You don't want notices and deprecation warnings appearing in your production logs. Um, so separate them out. You can do that within uh, Monolog, by the way, um, in the configs. Facilities, if you're not facil uh, familiar with facilities, um, it's like a channel. Um, you can tell Syslog when it receives data from a certain facility to send it to this destination. And that is done here in our syslog.com. So the main things I'm concerned about here are the two bottom entries in our syslog.com. These are ones that I've put in myself. I want all the API logs. So I've already told Monolog that I want all the API logs to go to through the local five facility. Our syslog is going to go, cool, I've got that. Now I'm going to save it to bar log api.log. Then you've got, um, it also gives the ability to send off to uh, remote servers, things like that, so you can process off machine. Um, you've still got these bulky log files. It's just sending, it's just filling the file system up. One of the best tools for this, to fix this, log rotate. Uh, does anyone use log rotate on their systems that, that, that you know about? Yeah. <laughs> Um, log rotate, um, it's just a cleanup facility. Uh, so this is an example of a log rotate configuration file for example app. This is going to, the working file that I'm telling it to look at is var log api.log. I'm telling it to, um, every day move api.log to a different file sticker. It, I think it normally puts a date time at the end of it. It prepends, uh, appends it with a date time. Compress that file. If, it's, if the file's missing, don't worry about it, carry it on. Um, if it's not empty, don't worry, you've got nothing to do. And then restart syslog so that you can recreate the original file so there's no missing file errors later on. The important part of this is the top line, rotate five. This is only gonna keep the last five days worth of logs. Everything else, don't care, devnal, see you later. Um, 
So now you've only got five days worth of logs. Um, that's great, your file system's happy. Disk usage, no problem. But what if you need something from 10 days ago? A good chance you will. Um, you need to make sure that those files are somewhere else, somewhere stored, again, centrally, that you can access um, and easily format. I'm gonna use the example of Kinesis Firehose here as an AWS service. Um, it basically tails the log files, it analyzes a stream of data in real time, um, so it works out what it is that you're sending it, or works out what it is that it's reading, rather. Uh, it forwards the data to a specified place. Um, you set that up in the AWS console, and it automatically formats the data um, and its path as well. So where it, when I say it sends the data, you can send it to S3, you can send it to a database, you can send it to EFS, or a local file system, uh, a shared file system, if you want to. The fact is you've got all the model there in one place. And again, you can tell, because you've got syslog sending the different files, uh, different logs to different files, you've got your API logs over here, you've got your access logs over there, um, your front end logs here, you can have a different stream for each of these files. So now you can have an S3 bucket for API logs, an S3 bucket for your front end logs. All right, more and more separation. Um, Again, that, that coupled with the tags at the end, it's starting to get really simple to find what you want. That's all great. So you've got these massive files and uh, in S3, all these buckets, they're separated into Hive for, uh, path format, easy to read, um, but there's still a shitload of them. There's loads of these um, log lines. You wanna be able to filter easily. You wanna be able to find the data that you want quickly. Right? If, if your system is down, your application's offline, You've got customers trying to access it. You want to know what went wrong. You don't want to sift through thousands of long lines to work it out. You want, you want an answer right away. Here's where the tooling comes in. These are a few um, SaaS and PaaS, mostly PaaS services that you can take advantage of. These are the main ones that Nito takes advantage of. So these are the ones I'm going to talk about. Um, and they're just different ways of seeing your data, seeing your logs. So what would Nito do? What does Nito do now? You're welcome. <laughs> All these e-commerce instances. Um, so our web front end, pretty much we call e-commerce, um, or the cPanel. Anyway, um, we'd have hundreds of these instances, all receiving data, sending data, creating errors, um, all useful stuff, right? All the stuff that we wanna see. But we're not going to SSH into any instance. Uh, for one, they're behind a load, um, they're behind an uh, auto scaling group. So you could SSH into one, it's gone seconds later. Um, so we can read these. We've got an agent for Paper Trail that picks up the logs instantly, it reads the files, and Paper Trail allows you to actually tail these logs live. What makes Paper Trail so powerful is its um, filtering. So you can, while you're, while you're seeing these, you can live grep the or live filter, the logs that you're viewing. So I only want to see sales channel logs. Type sales channel, done. That's all I'm going to see coming through. Another thing that we use, Datadog. Um, this runs off StatsD. Um, you can set events in your system. Um, we've got an API endpoint that is pretty hefty. Right? It does a lot of work before it returns a response. And I want to see how long it's taking to process the records that it's, that's required to return. So I'll set a start point, I'll set an end point, I'll time the, time, the, time, the amount of milliseconds it takes between, hopefully milliseconds. <laughs> um, and I'll send that as data off to StatsD. I can also send how many were processed in tags, how many records were processed in that time. So I can see on a dashboard right next to my desk, if there's a spike in, in time that's taken to respond, I can go, shit, I need to fix that. And so we can, instantly. This is the Kinesis Firehose um, setup that we've got running. So it's literally this, like I said before, streams, Kinesis streams the data into S3 buckets, separated S3, and then we use, um, I mentioned Hive formatting before. Um, having Hive, anyone aware what Hive, Apache Hive, um, formatting is for, no? Cool. 
Hive format's basically separating into directories, directories S3. Um, you've got the year as a folder, then the month, then the day, then the hour. All right, so separation, uh, partitioning of these files. It'll do that um, into S3, so they're nice and easy to find, and partition, and you can read these in Sumo Logic or AWS Athena. So I want to show you how that actually works here. Beyond me, demo gods. All right, this is our sales channel dashboard. I'm thankful that there is no sensitive information on here at the moment. I mean, I planned it that way. Um, so this is Sumo Logic. This data is comprised of purely application logs, errors, notices, info, etc., all coming from a production environment. I can see that there, when there's a spike in critical uh, critical logs coming through. I can see the breakdown of what these logs are. I can see that there's six of one and one of another. And if I want to find out more info, I can click into these. And this, can everyone see that all right? Uh, boom, zoom. I'm zooming on zoom, that's impressive. Um, so it's basically SQL. It's a, it's a query language that you're feeding this. Um, you can search through all these log files. It's indexed them. It's just, uh, well, I did <laughs> uh, using a very cool regex that I never want to talk about. Um, it basically partitions these log lines into different columns. So I've got there, I've got channel, uh, the collector, the instance ID, uh, the log message itself, uh, site ID, which is useful to us. And you can filter these, you can search by these, you can do everything that you would do in a normal database, but using the using log lines. All right, log lines are no longer boring greps of a terminal, in, inside a terminal. They're now useful. Um, you can count how many certain things have gone wrong within your system. Uh, another way of doing this, oh, get down there. Um, is AWS Athena. Am I logged in still? Yes, I am. Um, AWS Athena, I don't know if any of you use this. It does, it's essentially the same thing. Um, I've got application logs here. Um, this is the query that creates the table for my application logs. There's that beautiful regular expression I was talking about. So that, all that does is splits the log line into columns. And again, you can search through using what looks like um, SQL. If I want to see the last five critical application logs, I can do that. Um, you can join, you can do what you normally do. Not only that, Athena actually works as a data source as well. So the same as you would do a MySQL, process, uh, MySQL database, you can log into this. It wouldn't be great for live access in a PHP application, for example. It would be great if you've got old data that you need to recover and export later on. Um, it's a great way to do it. You don't need to keep it all in a local database. Use Athena, it's powerful. And if I'm correct, that should be it. No, don't make me go through all that again. Yeah, there we go. Um, there's some light reading there for you. If you want to take a big photo of that screen, um, they are some very good docs if, if you're wanting to learn more about this. Um, very useful. Otherwise, I'll share the slides anyway so you can see later on. Cool. Any questions? Did you have to, or did you migrate all of your old logs to a central place? Like if they were all on separate servers before or different services? Um, I didn't have that job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you would, of course. Um, uh, the likes of Athena and Sumo read from a direct source. So if the files aren't formatted for one, uh, that was another thing that I had to do, sorry, was actually make sure that every single place, every single um, application instance was using the same log, log, log line format, um, which it wasn't before. So all you'd end up is uh, with a load of empty records in the Athena table or whatever that didn't match up to the data that it was expecting. Um, so yeah, you would have to. Um, but it's a very small price to pay for looking after the future. Uh, 
yeah, could you sort of say you essentially can use this for performance monitoring by having a class of ones that just relate to how long certain tasks take and then you can monitor that? Absolutely. Um, Datadog is fantastic for that. It'll actually um, graph out what you've, what you've <coughs> discovered as well. Um, charts, um, anything you need to do, it will format uh, nice and readable. Um, it works, StatsD um, is a service that works on, I think it's a UDP uh, fire off. Um, and Datadog will pick up on that and it will analyze the data that it's received. Um, yeah, Datadog is super handy for anything like that. Um, timing is the, the timing that you record is just done in PHP anyway. So, so if you didn't yet have a baseline for something new, you can use that to yeah. see how it typically is and then it spikes later. That's how, we, that's how we use it. Um, you can look over the last month, you can look over the, over the last year, or you can just look over the last 24 hours if you want. Um, yeah, I had a question. How do you manage access? Say, for example, I'm a software developer and then I'm in charge of these systems and now I want to troubleshoot. It's very nicely done and all hierarchical, but how do I troubleshoot as a software developer? So you've written some code and you want to see if it's performing as well as it should be? No, uh, I've written some code and something has gone wrong and I want to troubleshoot. Okay. Um, yeah. This isn't great for dev environments. Um, so if you're, this is more for up and running yeah. applications. No, troubleshoot prod. Oh, troubleshoot prod. Yeah, 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 yeah prod. exactly how. I want to find out what actually happened. I got the symptoms. Yeah, I, I, I want to look at what the service is. There's a few different ways you can go about it. Um, like I was saying before, if you've got the um, paper trail set up with the live log tailing and everything, um, that's the most instant way that you can get feedback on it. You can trigger something. Um, I say instant. It's, it's as instant as any uh, platform as a service thing would be. Um, you can trigger the event that you think is, is blowing up, and you can tell the logs, and you can see the process of what's going on. Um, and see where the error comes from. If you want to, you can actually add more to those log lines if you want to. So um, if you are writing the code, deploying it, see if it breaks in prod, add a tag or something like that to it. Um, so it's easy to find what, what it is that you're looking for in there. Is that mm, sort so, of? So, so the whole team, say for example, we have seven developers and mm -hmm. everyone can be given access to paper trial. Yeah, yeah, it's all logging and, and, and it can do live logging tailing to the logs, but can it also look into what happened at a specific time that in the past that maybe support has escalated to levels? Yes, up. okay. And then we need to actually look into what actually happened. Yeah, afterwards. so that, um, that's where you'd use the likes of Athena where it's a bit more oh. past. So you can actually search by date time. Yeah. Um, someone said that it's happened at 3.30 on Tuesday. They can, you can go back 3.30 Tuesday, cool, what happened around that? Um, so you've set it up that um, other team members can yeah. have, you know, log in into AWS and they will know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. And which files. To yeah, we, we've got SSO sign in, uh, SSO set up for okay. AWS, so it's easy to access. Excellent. Thank you. Well, just, uh, do you have events um, running from, from any of these things? You know, monitoring the logs and notifying people of events you're about to happen. Um, security, whatever. You know. The likes, yeah. Um, we use Simo for a lot of security stuff. Um, you can set up metric alerts. Um, it was sort of out of the scope of this. Um, but yeah, absolutely, you can see if there's, a, if there's access that was granted that shouldn't have been, you can get an alert for that. Um, if there's a sudden spike in an endpoint being hit that doesn't normally get hit or shouldn't get hit, you can get an alert for that. Um, that's exactly what this sort of logging is about. It's not, not just your errors, it's finding everything to do with the application. Um, Oh, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can set you can set up um, notifications. Uh, Paper trial is good for that. Um, it's all good for that, really. Did you do anything to send um, filter sensitive data? Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, um, we're PCI compliant here, um, so we get audited every year on what data is around that should and shouldn't be. So where do you look for the application Before, side? Yeah, application side, yeah. Um, uh, it's either masked or deleted uh, from the data before it's sent across. Uh, if you're logging form data, that sort of thing, 
we'll make sure that <coughs> password fields aren't being captured for uh, reporting back to the logs. Um, I guess that at the end of the day, it all comes down to the developer in the actual uh, <laughs> So during the code review, do you, you guys have a policy to say like, this needs logs, this put logs in the code, so. That's actually where we picked up on the StatsD, um, uh, the timing for the API endpoint. That's, it was in a, it was in a pull request. Um, we figured we should probably have some kind of metrics around this. Um, so that's, we put that in there. Um, it also works the other way. When you're doing a pull request, you want to make sure people haven't left debug. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not the only person who's left gets here in the logs. <laughs> um, we've all done it. And yeah, that, that, that's, it goes both ways. Make sure that it's, it's something is logged as it should be and make sure something isn't logged where it shouldn't be. In theory, shouldn't that not be a problem because you just got this info debug local logs in production? Aha, yes, should be. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you're then depending, you're, you're then relying on one service to know that that shouldn't be there, um, rather than just try and whittle it down as much as you can to make sure that it's not going to get through. Um, also, don't, if you're wanting to know that the code gets here, um, log it as info or notice or debug. Don't log it as an error or critical, just so it stands out in the log files. Um, that's another way of making sure it doesn't get through. Just as a follow up to the debug mean error as well, you want to describe how we use fingers crossed in uh, logging metrics. Is that what you were doing? I, was, like, <laughs> I, was, I thought he was hitting on me. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Uh, has anyone used fingers crossed logging before? Yeah, a couple of people. Um, so this is <laughs> um, this is actually a great way to make sure that you're only logging relevant stuff. Um, fingers crossed will um, listen for everything, uh, all log levels, um, if you ask it to. And only when something goes wrong will it dump all of those logs. Um, so you can see everything there. The reason behind that is so that you can actually, you, you've got a full view of what's going on, but you're also not seeing irrelevant stuff when everything's running fine. Um, am I? I'm right on that, yeah? Okay, I figured you were testing me. Um, yeah, uh, does that make sense to a lot of people or anybody? Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we use that on the heavier parts of the system where we don't want to see everything at every given time. How does the system know where to start and where to stop for that big chunk? Voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. It's just, it's just for that single request. Sorry? It's just that single request that gets locked. Thank you. Yeah, I was actually going to ask about the pretty large systems. Sometimes you, eventually you will have a lot of developers who work together. And a, to be able to avoid that kind of logging to be not to be like a dumping ground, mm -hmm. like a log, logging anything. Is there any kind of like a like a coding standard to be able to <laughs> eat in there like a, a that you can follow it, like a best practice of like a how to categorize it or how to like a, when that's necessary, when that's not. There are uh, sort of best practices out there, but there's certainly not coding standards for it. Uh, that I've managed to find at least through my research the last six months on this. Um, it's really, if you know something's very active, um, if you've got a very active part of the system, try to make sure it's not pumping out too much. It, it really comes down to common sense when it comes to um, what you're, what you're learning. Uh, if, if there is something like uh, if an active part of the system um, and you know you don't want to clutter it full of log lines, uh, but you do want to know what's going on. That's where some, um, a service like StatsD uh, or for Datadog will come into play because you're not actually um, logging the data itself. You're firing it off and letting another service deal with it. Um, if you're working across multiple teams, you've just got to make sure that they're all ahead of it as well. Um, you make sure you're all on the same page. And I'll, I'll just add to that uh, one metric to watch is cost. As soon as you start consuming mm. SaaS services, Who will tell you? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So yeah, so basically, you know, the, one of the motivations for what we're, the reason why we're going down is you know, a, a pretty comprehensive sort of overview of how we can want to because the cost of all these buses is ginormous. So, uh, so to get live access to uh, to days and days of logging is what's costing us thousands of dollars. So you know, it's part of the motivation for changing the way we do it. Cool. Anything else? Cool. Thanks very much, guys.